Hey guys, Mr. Wiz here. So today is a kind of a repost of the video I made yesterday. After posting it, I decided I needed more visual aids. So we're going to try this again with some more graphs to kind of show it off what I'm talking about. So today we are taking a deeper dive into projectiles, specifically diagonal projectiles and how to calculate them. So this is a little bit of an advanced lesson because we're going to use some mathematics to calculate these diagonal angles. So to get started, let me show you what I've created so far. I have here a program where I have a monkey that is throwing poop. <laughs> so this is based on some games that some of my students have made. For some reason, this is a fun game for them. Um, so we have a monkey that's throwing poop. This is going to be a boss battle in a game that I'm building. So right now, the monkey is throwing the poop in four directions, up, down, left, and right. And I can see in the code here, right here, where he's throwing it, the first one has 50 in the VY, which means it's moving 50 pixels per second in the positive Y direction. Positive Y is down. So it's moving 50 pixels per second down. We have positive VX. Positive VX is to the right. Then we have negative VY, which is going to be up, and negative VX, which is going to be left. So right now, it, it, those poop flings are going 50 pixels per second in those four directions, up, down, left, and right. But for this boss fight, I don't want him to just be throwing stuff up, down, left, and right. I want him throwing it in all sorts of directions, all around him, to make it challenging for my players. So, how do I figure out where to have the poop fling, what numbers to give it, to, give, to throw it in these diagonal directions, right? How do I figure that out? Your first try might be, your first guess, might be to get one of these blocks. And since we're moving at 50 pixels per second, why don't we just put 50 in both of these numbers? 50 for the X, 50 for the Y, and see what happens. So now I have a diagonal. It's going the right direction. It is shooting diagonally like I want it to. But my problem is the speed. I want you to notice how fast that poop is flinging compared to the other two poops. So I've got 50 pixels per second to the right, 50 pixels per second down. This one, we gave it 50 and 50, which means it's moving 50 pixels per second to the right and 50 pixels per second down. So it's moving 50 pixels per second to the right and 50 pixels per second down at the same time. So how fast is it actually moving in a straight line there? Is it moving 50 pixels per second? No. If you look at where it's crossing the circle, I drew the circle to, as a visual aid. If you look at where it crosses the circle, it crosses the line a good, probably a good second, maybe a half a second before the other one does. Look at that. Look at how fast it's moving compared to the ones going up, down, left, or right. It's crossing a good half second probably before the other ones are. Why is that? So let's take a look at this visual aid here. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. So I'm going to draw a circle like we just had here. And I want you to imagine that the monkey is in the middle and he's flinging the poop 50 meters per second in that direction. He's also throwing it 50 meters per second either up, down, left, or right. I'll just use up for now. Okay. So, if we want it to go diagonal, and we want it to bend up here, this is what we really want. We want it to cross this point the same time it crosses the other points. So it's moving the same speed. So if we're thinking about this from a geometry standpoint, Really, we want all three, all three of these are going to be the same length. All three of these are the radius of the circle, which in our case is 50, because we're going 50 meters per second. So if we imagine that this circle, each of these lines is 50, that's what we're looking for. So how do we get the poop to cross here? If we type in 50, 50, like we had, we're telling it to move, well, here, this one's up and to the right. Ours was down and to the right. Just to give you another example, let's just change this to a negative 50 so you guys can see going up into the right. There we go. So it's moving up into the right, but it's crossing before we want it to. Okay. By moving it 
up 50 and to the right 50, we're actually creating something that's going to go here, basically, right? Because that's 50 up and 50 to the right. So right now, that is where it is going. I want you to assume that these are 90 degree angles. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. So we don't want it there. We want it here. We need it to travel less distance in the same amount of time. So how do we figure out what the X and the Y are going to be to get it to stop here? So it's only moving 50 pixels per second. As I mentioned, there's a little bit of math in this video. Don't freak out. It's not hard math. What we're going to be using is Pythagorean's theorem, which hopefully you've already learned in school. If you haven't, you probably will soon, depending on your grade level. Pythagorean's theorem is a simple idea that basically says, oh, let me zoom out here. Basically what Pythagorean's theorem is, is it's for right triangles. So any triangle that has a right angle, a 90 degree angle, Pythagorean's theorem basically says that if you add the square of this side and the square of this side, you will end up with the square of that side. Basically, in a calculator, we write this as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the formula. So one side of the triangle squared plus the other side of the triangle squared will equal this hypotenuse. That's what we call the long end of the, of the right triangle. So when we're dealing with circles like we're doing now, any radius of the circle is going to be a hypotenuse. So if we're drawing it there, that'll work. If we're drawing one here, that'll be one. That'll be one. These are all going to be hypotenuses to different triangles because basically what we're saying is that there's a triangle that goes here and here, and we would have to calculate that to figure out this length. Well, actually, no, we already know this length. Yeah, I'm getting myself tongue tied. It's a little hard to put in words. I wish I had a chalkboard and I could draw it out for hand for you guys. So basically all these radiuses, all these are the same length to calculate it. So it moves the distance we want to, we need to figure out these two. So for the one that we already have here, in order to calculate it so that the, the poop crosses the line the same time as the others, we need to figure out this line and then also the short line here. We need to figure out these two lines. That's what we need to figure out. Now, in this case, I want it to be in the middle. So this is going to be easier math for us because these two are going to be the same size, right? If I was going with a harder angle, if I was going with something like this, the math would be a little bit more challenging for me because I have two different sizes here I'd have to figure out, right? The small one and the longer one. But I already know this one. This one's going to be 50 in this case because we're going 50 meters per second. All these radiuses, no matter where I put it, all these radiuses that go from the center to the edge are all the same. So they're all going to be 50 for the example that we're creating, 50 pixels per second. Every single one of these, no matter where I put it, this part is 50. So what I need to figure out is the VX and the VY. Right? That's what I need to figure out. The VX and the VY. So if I want it to be in the middle. Oops, I drew that badly. I apologize for the hand drawing here, guys. This is the best tool I could find to create a visual aid. All right. So if I want it to end up there in the middle, I've got a 90 degree angle here. And these two angles here will be 45 degree angles, which basically means that these two lengths are going to be the same size. So what does that mean from a calculation standpoint? 
It means that instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's really a squared plus a squared because they're both the same. Okay, so in my situation, because I'm doing a 45 degree angle where both sides are going to be the same length, in order to figure this out, a squared plus a squared is basically 2a squared. So in order to figure this out, I already know that the radius is going to be 50 for my scenario, right? Because these other ones are all 50. So it's 50 to the right, 50 up. So this, this diagonal that I'm creating, I need that to be 50 as well. So if I'm going back to my calculator, that C is really 50, okay? So I need to figure out what A is. That's what I'm solving for right now. So 50 squared, if you didn't already know, 50 squared is 2,500. So I need to figure out what A is. So I'm going to divide both these sides by 2. So if I divide this side by 2, I end up with A squared. If I divide this side by 2, I'm going to end up with 1,250. So that's 2,500 divided by 2. If you need me to show you here, I can. 2,500 divided by 2. 1,250. All right. So I have A squared equals, oops, I didn't mean to do that. A squared equals 1,250. So now I need to do the square root to figure out what A is, right? So let's go ahead and square root 1,250. And that leaves me with 35.35533906. So because we're using make code, we're going to use whole numbers. I'm going to round this to 35. So basically what we're saying here is that the length of these, this line and the short line here are both going to be around 35, just a little bit over 35, but I'm going to round it down to 35. So let's see what that looks like in make code. So where it has 50 and negative 50 right now, instead of moving it 50 pixels to the right and 50 pixels up, I'm going to move it 35 pixels to the right. And I'm going to use negative 35 here to do 35 pixels up. There we go. If we watch it now, look at the timing here. Boom. It is not moving faster this time. It is moving the same speed as the other two, and it is crossing the line at the same time the other two are crossing the line. You see that? So, yes, this was advanced because there was math involved, and I apologize if I lost you. Hopefully you were able to follow along. Hopefully you understand the Pythagorean theorem good enough to be able to follow along with what I was trying to show you there. But basically what my idea was, what I was trying to show you was that if you want to do a diagonal, no matter where it goes, if you want to do a diagonal and you need it to go a certain speed, you need to figure out the Pythagorean calculations. You need to figure out these two numbers, right? So if I wanted to go at that angle there, I would have to figure out this and this. That's what I'm going to use when I'm calculating my projectile. So in this case, I got 35 and negative 35. I'm going to go ahead now and get the other directions as well. So I'm going to do one where they're both positive 35. I'm going to do one where they're both negative 35. And then that one had positive first and negative second. So I'm going to do one where it's negative 35 first and then positive 35 second. So now I should have, and there we go. I've got the, the poop flying in all the different directions. And I have the beginning here of a great boss fight. So how do I turn this into an actual game? Well, that shouldn't be too challenging. Um, of course, I can get rid of the circle because I was just using that as a visual aid. Maybe do something like the trees here. Maybe I reset the position of my boss so he's closer to the top of the screen up here in the trees. Uh, maybe I give him some movement. That would make sense. If he's standing still, it's going to be too easy for the player to avoid him. So maybe I decide to give him some movement. I can do that different ways. I could give him a velocity. 
and I can pick some numbers here. Maybe I just want them to move left and right. So if I just want to move left and right, then I put the VY to zero and leave VX. And then I can also have him bounce on the walls. So I'm just brainstorming some different ways of doing this here. So now I've got a boss that bounces back and forth, although he's moving the same speed as his poop. That's not very fun. Let's go slower than the poop. Let's do 20. Um, there we go. That's not bad. All right. So I've got a boss here that I could fight against. Maybe this is one way of doing it. If I didn't want to have him bouncing around the ceiling like that, I could use a game update and maybe have him uh, in random positions. I could use the set position block here and use some randomness so that he randomly appears somewhere on the screen. Um, let me see, the X would be between zero and 160, and I could do a Y of between zero and 120. And I could have him hop around the screen while he's, oh, that's too fast. Maybe every two seconds, he changes position, just to keep you on your toes, right? That could be kind of fun. So there's lots of different ways I could kind of customize this game. And then for the player, I could decide how I want the player to respond. Is the player just trying to avoid getting hit? Um, and if so, then maybe I should put a countdown on here to try to keep him alive. Maybe I give him lives. I need to decide what happens when the player gets hit by the monkey poop. Do they lose life? Does it just immediately end the game? Um, does the player get to shoot back? Maybe I decide to give the player a weapon of his own that he can fire at the monkey with to win. So there's all sorts of different things I could do to customize this game some more. This is a great start to what could be a pretty fun game. So if you decide to make a game like this, I would love to see it. Please make sure that you share the link with me by clicking that share button, so naming your game, and sending the link to me in the comments so I can play your game. So if you make a boss battle, something similar to this, please share it with me. I want to play it. Um, if you learned something new today, please click that like button. <laughs> and if you are not already subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this channel so that they can learn how to build fun games too. I know this video was a little bit advanced with the mathematics, but don't let that bother you. There's still a lot we can do. Even if you're not great at math, there's so much you can do when it comes to computer coding and building. So please stick around and I'll see you next time.